This video explains our dry knee arthroscopy technique using intermittent carbon dioxide gas insufflation for anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. The authors and contributors have no conflicts of interest to disclose. The patient is supine with a standard lateral post proximal to the knee. A tourniquet is applied around the thigh, and the limb is prepared and draped in the usual manner. Anatomical landmarks are drawn, and the lower extremity is drained of blood with an Esmark bandage. The tourniquet is then inflated to 300 mm of mercury. A modified laparoscopic insufflator is connected to an arthroscope. Normal saline is connected to the arthroscope's second entry side, to clear any synovial fluid or hemarthrosis, which is then aspirated using a suction pump attached to a shaver. After placing a standard anterolateral portal, an insufflator fills the knee joint with carbon dioxide gas up to a pressure of 20 mm of mercury. During a dry diagnostic arthroscopy, the surgeon creates the position for the standard anteromedial approach under direct vision. This is first assessed with a needle and then with an 11-point scalpel, after which the skin is incised. Following this, a hemostat clamp or a blunt trocar is used to remove any soft tissue and puncture the joint capsule, which helps to provide a sealing effect of soft tissue. This creates an anteromedial portal for the passport button cannula. If any remaining Hoffa fat pad obstructs clear vision after joint insufflation, it is removed by a shaver. When a clear view of the notch is made and the medial wall is prepared, an awl is inserted through the anteromedial portal, and a mark is made on the anatomic femoral footprint of the ACL. The semitendinosus and gracilis tendons are harvested through a vertical incision located 1 cm medial to the tibial tuberosity using a closed-end tendon stripper. The tendons are sutured at the distal end with a whip stitch and then bent over the tight rope on the femoral side, ensuring a graft width of 8 to 8.5 cm. To secure further manipulation and tension during fixation, a number 2 fiber wire is attached to the tibial end of the graft. First, a 4.5 mm drill bit is used to drill through the femur. A measuring guide and passing pin are used to ensure accuracy. Next, using the inside-out technique, the femoral bone is drilled to the appropriate size for the ACL. After drilling, the proximal portion of the femoral bone tunnel is cleaned with a shaver to reduce the risk of soft tissue entrapment. Finally, any remaining bone or soft tissue is irrigated and removed using saline. The tibial guide is positioned at a 55-degree angle to target the center of the ACL stump. The next step involves using the cannulated drill set to ream the bone from the outside in based on the previously measured ACL graft size. The synovial covering of the ACL remnant and the tibial attachment are carefully preserved throughout the procedure. The tight rope and graft are passed through the tibial and femoral tunnels using a passing suture. The tight rope is then tightened until the proximal 2 cm mark of the graft reaches approximately the inside of the femoral tunnel. The knee is then placed in 90 degrees of flexion, and the ACL graft is tightened and secured with a bioresorbable interference screw whose width and length are determined according to the size of the ACL graft and the length of the tibial tunnel. Graft tension is checked by performing a range of motion test from 90 to 0 degrees of flexion. If necessary, the tight rope system is used to apply additional tension. Upon completion of the procedure, a thorough examination of the tissue indicates no noticeable swelling in the knee area. Thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you found it educational.